The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory be to thee, O Lord. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There was some buzz in social media this year about an elementary school production of A Charlie Brown Christmas, in which it was decided in strict conformity to the laws of the United States, forbidding the establishment of one religion over another, school district policy, and I am sure the hyperactive sensibilities of the political correctness police, that Linus's speech at the end of the play explaining that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown, would just be omitted. But never mind, the entire audience recited it anyway from memory. There were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. Now, whether this story about the elementary school is true or internet fiction or more likely internet exaggeration, I care not. The point for me is that it could be true. Precisely because the words of today's gospel, the Christmas gospel that we know so well, this, this gospel is so loved, so poetically beautiful, so touchingly tender, that the words from it live in our hearts and in our memories. And we need very little prompting for them to just pour forth from our mouths. This past Tuesday, I was out visiting in some of the nursing homes and in other families' homes, uh, offering Christmas communion, and I read this gospel, and as I got to the conclusion, a very proper Episcopalian lady, who under normal circumstances would not interrupt the priest or blurt out some commentary for herself in the middle of the liturgy, nevertheless could not restrain herself. And right in the middle of the gospel, she said, how beautiful, <laughs> which in my book is just as good as praise be to thee, O Christ, from the Book of Common Prayer. How beautiful indeed. And she brought forth her firstborn son, laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the end. No room. We are reminded of the words of another gospel, which is a part of the Christmas tradition, the first chapter of John's gospel. He came to his own home and to his own people, and his own received him not. We're reminded of the words of Jesus himself as a grown man saying to the crowds, foxes have holes, birds of the, nest, of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. And we are reminded of the words of a well-loved hymn that we sing here at Church of the Holy Communion every Palm Sunday. In life, no house, no home, in death, no friendly tomb, but what a stranger gave. What may I say? Heaven was his home, 
but mine the tomb wherein he lay. In his birth and in his life and even in his death, Jesus stood in solidarity with the rejected, with those who had no home, even as we know that there are those in this city who will sleep under a bridge not a mile from this church. And we know that there are many who are not only homeless, but without a homeland, exiles, refugees, victims of violence, civil war, political corruption, throngs of people huddled in refugee camps, not safe in their own country, not wanted in any other. Jesus knows their fear, their loneliness, their isolation. They are his people. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. We baptized a baby last Sunday on the fourth Sunday in Advent, and the baby's grandmother told me that she had to teach her daughter how to swaddle the baby. Wrap him up tight like a burrito, Grandma wisely counseled. And it worked. The baby stopped crying, and he slept, and he was happy, the confines of the cloth being perhaps a comforting reminder of the confines of the womb. I'm certain that the Virgin Mary wrapped Jesus tightly to make him comfortable, to keep him warm, to keep him safe. But we cannot but also see in those wrapped bands of cloth an image of the grave clothes wrapped tightly around the crucified body. As I've mentioned many times before at the Church of the Holy Communion, the uh, creche that we have near the baptismal font is also within the shadow of the 14th station of the cross. You can't quite see it where you are for the Christmas tree standing in the way. But if you think about the imagery, on the image on the wall above, Jesus is being placed in the tomb. And in the image below, baby Jesus rests on the hay in the manger. And we see together the vulnerable child and the crucified man. And we remember that Jesus stands in solidarity with the vulnerable, those in physical danger, those who are abused even by those they love, those who are supposed to protect them, those who are in fragile places for many reasons, perhaps economic hardship. And we remember that Jesus, the crucified one, stands in the midst even of those who grieve. Death and tragedy and grief do not take a Christmas vacation. At a time when much of the world sings, all is calm, all is bright, there are countless others who mourn greatly during this Christmas season. Our hearts this year go out to much-loved Bishop Bill Skilton of South Carolina, whose wife, Lynn, died after a stroke just two days ago. And to all the others in the world, known and unknown, who during this supposedly happy season are in similar circumstances of grief. Jesus stands in the midst of them. They are his people. And she brought forth her firstborn son and laid him in a manger. A manger. A place where animals feed. In the town of Bethlehem, you know that the word Bethlehem means house of bread. And now, in a feed trough, in a town named for the house of bread, is a child who becomes for us living bread come down from heaven that the hungry both physically and spiritually may come to him and be fed and filled and restored. Another image to think about. On either side of that manger are barnyard animals between ox and ass, the manger with the child. Two living creatures on either side of the manger not unlike the two living creatures, the cherubim carved on either side of the Ark of the Covenant, or the creatures on either side of the glory of God that are shown to us in Isaiah's vision of God from the temple, or St. John's glip, glimpse of heaven from his exile in the island of Patmos, looking up and seeing heaven revealed. On earth, we sing, what child is this on Mary's lap, where ox and ass are feeding in heaven, the living creatures surround the throne, and angelic choirs sing the thrice holy hymn, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. And on this day, this bright Christmas morn, 
we, you and I, gaze in the manger on earth, and in a moment in the Eucharist we gaze up to heaven, and we see that these two worlds have been made one. The old has been made new, the blind have been given their sight, the lame leap, the prisoner is freed, the poor have good news preached, and tears are dried from every eye. All of these broken people are his people. We are his people. It was a long time ago when Caesar Augustus sent out his decree that the whole world should be taxed. And as that came into effect, the little Jewish world intersected the mighty Roman Empire and this fragile earth received her king. And the shepherds watched and angels sang, the child was born and this tired old world was made new. Merry Christmas, beloved. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.